This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Smith Falls Constable Aaron Tompkins back with me. He is the Community Service Officer for our Smith Falls area. Thanks for joining us again. And as always, uh, thanks for having me. Glad to be back. We had a summer break and uh, we're back at it again. So how was your summer? Very busy, very good though, and uh, did get some holidays. So uh, appreciative of that and uh, just happy to be back and uh, trying to get back into a somewhat of a normal routine um, with today being the first day of school. Yes, and we've got to make mention of that. We're, we are taping this today. September 7th is the first day back at school. People are actually going to school today, and that's a, a big event uh, all over. And, uh, and uh, not unlike Smith Falls right now, uh, there's so many kids so excited this morning getting up to go to school. So let's talk about what did it look like? I'm sure you were out there bright and early this morning. Yeah, so it was very busy. Um, we had officers um, doing some uh, proactive uh, enforcement because uh, this time of the year unfortunately uh, people do need reminders um, around the vice uh, or sorry the bicycle um, zones uh, around the school zones and more importantly the the school crossing guards right and bus stops so that's uh, that's why we're out there um, but today I had the opportunity to go and speak with um, one of the lovely crossing guards on chambers and um, for Duncan J School, and she's been there, I think, 12 years, Mary Lou. So very, very nice lady and uh, had some great conversations. Um, a lot of the kids, some apprehensive, um, just they hadn't been back to school, or maybe this was their first time going to school. And uh, so you see the, the parents going to school, and then you see them coming back 10 or 15 minutes later, and uh, a totally different uh, smile on their face. They're relieved their kids got to school, and. Uh, that they're actually going to be having some interactions uh, in person. So very big day for a lot of families. And I mean, so often too, we're, we're addressing and, and we're talking to the children about, uh, you know, going back to school and safety and all that sort of stuff. But it's those of us too, that uh, w we see so much more traffic out there. We see them coming to the studio this morning. There were so much, many more children waiting at bus stops and, and the traffic and the crossing guards. We have to be mindful of that as well. Yeah, so again, it's just that friendly reminder. Um, there is a lot more going on, and we haven't had a uh, full day in person for quite a while. And uh, like I mentioned, some of these kids, it's their first time, so they might not be paying as much attention as they should be while they're walking uh, or bicycling to school, for that matter. And uh, you said the example every year, there's a group of kids, they're walking down the sidewalk, and um, one of them jumps off the, the sidewalk and onto the roadway just by accident and just not paying attention. So again, these are things we have to be mindful and uh, there's lots of signage posted around every school in Smith Falls. So again, uh, onus is on the drivers to uh, to make sure they slow down and uh, are extra alert and until we get into that normal routine. Okay, there's a lot of kids. Um, I know I have to slow down and uh, as a driver, this is something every year and this is any community. So. That's right. I mean, children are pretty excited too. I, I believe it was, I think it was April when we went on our last lockdown. And so children haven't been at school. They haven't seen their friends. They're getting new teachers today. It's so exciting for them. So we just have to be mindful of them as, as well as drivers and as pedestrians too. So it's an exciting day for them. It is. And uh, in, in talking to a lot of the schools, um, just want to say good job. And they've, they've taken a proactive approach for uh, safety measures under their uh, management and uh, their boards, as well as uh, liaising with the local health units here. So um, I know it looks a little bit different than the normal. Um, I know a lot of the kids can't be dropped off directly at the schools, so they have to do a short distance uh, walk to the schools and staggered start time, um, different entrances for the grades. So again, neat to see um, the safety precautions that um, the schools have taken in, into factor and uh, it it's just makes everybody feel that much safer. I mean, when you mentioned the different entrances at schools and everything, uh, our studio is located about a block away from Chimo. My goodness, they've done amazing work over there. They've made the parking lot so much bigger and uh, the access, the entrance for the buses, it's huge. Yeah, so good job on them. And uh, that's something that's been uh, kind of in talks for the last two to three years. How do we make this as safe as possible? 
Um, so they, they've done a great job. We've tried a few things, um, whether it be the people parking down the road. So we did some education there as well as uh, the bus pickoff drop-offs. Um, they limited the uh, access to who could go in there during the pickup times. So again, this is uh, just great planning and uh, hopefully it works out well, but yeah, what a difference. Oh, looks great. Yes, yes. well, we're, we're excited for the children. We hope they have a great day. Can't wait to see the pictures when we get home, for sure, for sure. Now, I, I saw on uh, the Smith Falls Police website, or their Facebook page, you were able to get out to a few outside events this year uh, and be able to be with the children, too. And I mean, that's such a big part of what you do as a community service officer. I saw pictures of you at an event, an outdoor event at the Rideau, uh, Care, Rideau Child Care Center and one at the Heritage House Museum. Yeah, so again, uh, had a great time, and uh, out on bicycle all summer, um, just you never know what you're going to find, right? So just drive by something, and oh, there's a whole bunch of uh, people there, and they were wearing some uh, interesting costumes, so it was Harry Potter uh, Day at the Heritage, Heritage House Museum, so again, popped in there, got to see uh, a Quidditch match, so that was pretty interesting, um, and then I had uh, the Rideau Child Care Center reach out and said, would you guys be interested? So we teamed up with um, Smith Falls Fire Department, uh, as well as uh, Samir's construction uh, group as well. So they brought out some equipment, uh, fire truck. Um, we did it as safe as possible. Kind of, uh, we'd, normally we would have all the kids go through the vehicles and, and get up close and personal, but uh, we parked them in the middle of a big parking lot. Um, and then afterwards we, we fielded questions as they always have lots. Uh, about the equipment and firefighters and uh, the big equipment so great job and uh, it was just a, a neat way that we could actually interact with uh, some of the kids in the community safe right so excellent excellent and I, I mean you made mention too about being on the bike you spend a lot of the summer uh, doing uh, your job on the bike yeah so we've we've done very well um, had a lot of officers out and uh, very visible in uh, downtown core all of our parks um, that was our primary focus uh, with the bicycles this year is to have that uh, visibility in, in, in all those target areas because uh, that's where we get a lot of tourists and uh, it's, it's a nice positive interaction as well as uh, all the local children um, go down to the splash pad, go down to uh, Hydro Park area, the swimming areas and uh, it's just positive interactions, right? So they can see, okay, yeah, he's uh, driving a bicycle or she's driving a bicycle they're getting off, they're coming over, they're talking to me, am I in trouble? And then, no, it's, it's a positive interaction. Hey, how's it going, guys? And uh, a couple officers brought some freezies and popsicles down for the kids. So uh, a lot of nice, positive feedback on that, and uh, good job to those officers. Excellent, excellent. Now, right before we go on air, I, all the time Aaron and I talk about what we're going to talk about, but I always throw something out there that I think of during our conversation, and here it is. <laughs> I've seen Perfect. you early in the morning uh, setting up that... Uh, I don't know what the proper name of it is. When, you're, you, when you drive by it, it tells you your speed. Right, so that's uh, a speed enforcement trailer. So what that does is, again, a reminder for uh, motorists that uh, the posted speed limit, and if you um, are exceeding that by whatever the, the number is that we put it, uh, it'll flash and make all these weird uh, lights at you. Um, so it's just an, it's an attention grabber. So we've been focusing uh, on Chamber Street. So we've had some recent complaints there. It's a 40 zone, especially with the, uh, the schools. Um, so see, expect some enforcement out there. Um, and again, it's, it's education, it's enforcement, it's a bit of both. And, um, but that's, uh, we're able to record data, vehicle speeds as well. So every time a vehicle passes, it, it records speed. So it can give us an, a median speed from uh, 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. on Chambers Street, targeting north uh, northbound traffic. Or um, so very specific that way, and it'll tell us the uh, the amount of vehicles. So it's good data for internal as uh, as well as we can report that back to maybe some other uh, agencies within the town too. So. Oh, wow. I, I, I like it as a little reminder, too, because, uh, well, you know, I work in Kempo, so sometimes coming into town, you're still going a little bit too fast, and it flashes at you, and I, I like it. It just gives you a little reminder, but that's great. It's a data collector for you. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's the secondary, right? So we can go back. Uh, if we receive a, a couple driving complaints or the town maybe receives uh, some complaints, we can say, no, we, we had the speed trailer out. Um, here's some recent data. The, the median speed was 
57 kilometers per hour in a posted 50. Um, and then it, it's just a nice way. Uh, we can throw something out on paper and uh, with uh, real real statistics. So great investment, and uh, it, it's out there. You see it quite a bit in yeah. uh, high target areas. And uh, any complaints, if we can make it work, we'll uh, we'll put it out there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now you've got uh, a busy week coming up the 19th. Uh, you've got a few things going on. Yeah, so we have uh, <clears throat> two initiatives that we're going to take part with. First one is Child Passenger Safety Week through the uh, Ministry of Transportation in Ontario. So again, uh, we'll just be checking on car seats, um, child passengers, make sure they're wearing the seat belts properly, um, proper size for the car seats. Uh, so if officers make a traffic stop, we'll make that extra note if there is a child uh, in the car or let's say <clears throat> an empty car seat. Okay, maybe have that secondary conversation. When uh, was the last time, or how big is your child? Because uh, there's there's different weights and heights for uh, front facing, rear facing, booster seats, and when can my child not have a seat? Um, which is surprisingly old and uh, big. So there's uh, a lot of people just don't know. Um, so that's going to be one of our initiatives for sure. Uh, secondary one is. Um, National Railway Safety Week, and uh, it's called Operation Lifesaver. So we we take part in this every year. So it's railway safety crossing uh, safety. So a lot of the cyclists, uh, motorists, um, pedestrians, we want to make sure that people are crossing at the actual crosswalks, not over tracks, which uh, unfortunately we do see. Um, in certain areas of town, people that are walking, uh, it's a shortcut, right? But we hear fatalities, and there are fatalities in uh, Canada every year because of that reason. So, again, uh, it's just a reminder for those safety talks. And uh, I think last year we put down some uh, thermal decals, and it was um, at some of the high volume uh, crossings in Smith Falls. So, it, again, just a, a reminder to uh, look, listen, and live is, uh, it was that campaign. And again, that's through the same uh, Operation Lifesaver, very good organization. And, uh, we're happy to take part and, uh, we'll see if, uh, I've reached out to the CP rail police as well and, uh, see if we want to do a, a joint, uh, education enforcement, uh, strategy when maybe one day that week. So, well, you know, we are a railway town too. And, uh, I, I, sometimes you can get a bit complacent when, you know, you see all these big freight trains going through, you know, uh, down, I think it's Chambers Street. We've got uh, uh, other ones going through town. You get sort of used to. I lived a block away from the railway station uh, over on Condi Street, and you get sort of used to having trains around, but you have to be safe around them. Yeah, exactly. And uh, especially kids, we want to make sure that they learn at a young age. Um, and that's really, if, if the parents don't know, then they're not going to pass on that proper information. So, um, just a reminder that if uh, the wigwags or the, the lights are going, the bells are chiming, I mean, that's a, that's a no-go. It doesn't matter if you're in a car, bicycle, or even on foot because uh, the via trains, uh, they, they can go through town pretty quick as, uh, as we've seen. Um, so we just hate to have any accidents for sure. That's right. And if I can just go back to the uh, child safety uh, seats again, too. As a grandparent, it's a great investment. If you've got your grandchild with you or, or you've got a family member with you an awful lot, gone are the days where you just took a car seat out and put it here and put it here and put it here. To put it in properly, it, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of uh, muscle and sweat. <laughs> Invest yeah, no, in one, put right. it in properly once, and you have it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, again, we're just checking. It, it's going to be your proper fitment. So uh, let's say in a front or rear facing, a lot of kids, uh, what we find is the, the buckles are too loose, mm -hmm. right? So if you're in an accident, that's not going to really uh, protect that child. Um, or just looking at it and if there's, it's pretty scary what, uh, what we do see. So again, those are those times for education. Um, asking the parents, when was, how old's the car seat? Well, it's 12 years old. My uh, we used it for my first daughter or son, yeah. so maybe that is now expired, right? So, right. again, just those reminders, um, and then we'll post some stuff on our social media in regards to that as well. Just to just to remind people that um, there are certain things you do need to be cognizant of with child seats for sure. Well, all in the name of safety for our children, so it's worth it for sure, for sure. Now, on September 22nd, you are uh, having an event at the police station for our Special Olympians, our local Special Olympians. 
Yeah, so again, very, very happy to uh, to do that. So we're going to have a group of our local special uh, Olympians out, and uh, we just call it an appreciation night um, because we have such a close bond with uh, with our local athletes and support them. They support us uh, in the community. So again, it's just going to be a nice to have. I have some music, hopefully I have some games, uh, weather permitting, and uh, it'll just be at the station, and it's, uh, it's a closed event, so it's not open to the public, but um, just for those athletes and uh, their guardians. So again, looking forward to it, and I know they're going to be very excited for it as well. Absolutely, absolutely. We have got uh, local athletes who are involved in swimming, bowling, bocce ball. Uh, those are the three main ones, and, and uh, you've been very supportive of them. Uh, you're one of the coaches for swimming too, I understand. So uh, it's been hard not doing it for the last, what are we at, 17, 18 months now. So. So nice that you're you're doing something for them. They're going to be they'll be looking forward to it and having a great day. Yeah, so they got back out for bocce ball. So that's uh, that's Monday nights down at Lower Reach Park. Uh, swimming still a no go, unfortunately. But uh, hopefully we're 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 hoping for winter. That's what we're hoping. Start in January so we can get back to the swimming because that's uh, that's my favorite one. Obviously, if I'm uh, taking part in the pool and uh, they cheer me on and I cheer them on and uh, we'll go from there. Excellent, excellent. I mean, you made mention of the, the bocce ball pit, and that's what's in Lower Reach Park. <clears throat> I quite often see people uh, post something, they go, what is this? They didn't know what it was, and that's what it is. It's a bocce ball, is it a pit or lanes? Is that what we call them? I think it's like a pit. That's a what pit? I call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was built for our Special Olympic athletes, but uh, we, we share with everybody if you want to get out there and play bocce ball. <laughs> Monday nights, you say? Monday nights they go out, yeah. Excellent, excellent, awesome. Well, as, as always, uh, Aaron, it's great that we have this uh, connection here at FYI with you, and thanks for joining us. It's our sixth season, and uh, we get monthly updates from you. Is there anything you'd like to add before we wrap up? No, just uh, want to say thank you to, I mean, all of our public. Um, very little uh, COVID-related um, incidents. There's the one-off. So, again, we've been saying this from the start that we have an amazing community, um, we're one of the highest uh, vaccinated Lanark leaves in Grenville. I think uh, still may be tops in the province. So, again, everybody's doing their part, and uh, we're just leading the pack, and it, and it shows in our community, and uh, everybody's trying to stay as positive as possible. It's been long and tiring, and uh, I know we're all tired of it. However, um, hopefully the, the light is getting bigger at the end of the, the tunnel if they uh, – as you say, as you would say that way. So uh, fingers crossed and uh, just keep up the good job and listen to those public health messaging. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Constable Police. Constable uh, Aaron Tompkins from our Smith Falls Police. Uh, he is our community service officer. We look forward to your next update uh, in a few weeks. Awesome. Thanks for having me and uh, see you in a few weeks.